so the campaign office hours for us all to learn, connect, share. Um, campaigns are a really important part of the Wikimedia movement, and they offer a really, um, especially as movement strategy grows, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, we need to find tactics and ways to support the movement uh, for folks to come in. Um, I'm Alex Stinson. I'm a senior program strategist at the Wikimedia Foundation, um, and I am based in Uruguay. Um, and it's, it's so good to see people from all over the world in the conversation. Next slide, please. Um, you'll see some names in the room. Uh, we now have two teams at the foundation focused on uh, campaigns. We have a programs team, which includes Felix, Narti, and myself. Um, we are focused on the kind of social dynamics and systems, uh, and, and the kind of training and capacity building required for, for people to organize campaigns. We have a product team. You will hear from Alana and Gregory, but I also believe uh, Lauren and possibly Irene will they're, they're focused on the software side of the house. Um, and I'll let Alana explain exactly why um, and what we're focused on in a few minutes. Um, but if you want to learn more, we have a central page on uh, Meta that is focused on um, campaigns. Uh, and it, again, it's in the slide deck. And if you want to follow along in the notes or ask questions while we're talking, uh, feel free to queue them up in the Etherpad. Uh, today's topic is software and product development for campaigns. Um, and we're, I'm going to do a brief introduction, and then we're going to hand it off to the product team uh, to, to explain what they're thinking about a first feature. Um, next slide, please. So why do we need software for campaigns? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is a graphic I've been working on recently that's very uh, early drafty in the process, but campaigns are complex. We interact at multiple different layers, uh, at the international level, at the local level, at the participant level. And uh, like other movements and social communities, um, it's really important that uh, we have tools that both connect these different levels, but also make it easier to coordinate. Um, there are so many people involved in campaigns. Wikipedia pages wanting photos had over a thousand people involved um, this last round. And it's like that kind of coordination right now is really, it's running on a very complex uh, mix of kind of on and off wiki tools, uh, social systems, and uh, coordination. And so um, again, this really drafty map shows just how many different activities there are involved at every level in the campaign. And they're really complex. Um, next slide. And so as we think about this, uh, we, we're really excited to have like a technical opportunity, a software opportunity right now, because the tools we have now are, are not adequate for that scale of campaign. Um, they're, they're, they're good. We've made do for a long time with kind of volunteer or community built tools that really help us. Um, but it's, it's not, the, the like level of sophistication needed, especially as movement strategy asks us to work on topics for impact at scale. We're gonna see more organizers, more campaigns, more topics, which means we need better and more consistent tools that set new organizers, especially up for success because we're gonna have more and more parts of the movement involved uh, in organizing. And so um, we're going to, kind of introduce you to what, where that, where our current thinking is at the foundation is about this. And so I'm gonna hand it over to Alana, um, who is gonna show you what we're up to. Hey everyone, uh, nice to see all of you in this chat. Um, so hi, my name is Alana. Uh, I'm the product manager for the new campaigns team at the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, so campaigns, like Alex said, is a new team. Uh, we were formed in 2021. We're a software and product development team, and we're focused on building and improving tools for campaign organizers and participants. Uh, our big goal is that we want to provide software solutions that empower and support campaign organizers. For experienced editors, what this really means is we want to simplify workflows and provide more powerful tools. And for newer organizers, we want to make it easier for them to be effective long-term organizers. 
Next slide, please. So as a team, we want to be building solutions that are really useful to organizers. So we thought the best way to figure out how to do that was to talk to organizers themselves. Um, so as a first step, we set up calls with about 50 campaign organizers in the movement. They worked in different kinds of campaigns and wikis and regions. Um, and we really wanted to know what was working for them and what wasn't so we could identify the biggest challenges. Um, and from those conversations, as well as research and information we already had, uh, we identify these top 10 sort of like problem or focused areas that were really key for a lot of organizers. So I'll briefly run through some of them and then we'll talk about some of our plans for them later. Uh, so first, there's the concept of the organizer and action center. So in other words, we've heard from organizers that they want a central place where they can find all the tools and resources available to them. So this is what we would call the organizer center. Then there's the participant side of this, um, and that would be a central place where people can learn about campaign events and how to join them. That's the action center. Um, with list building, we've heard that people want easier ways to create work lists and more powerful tools to do that. Uh, we also know organizers want easier ways to create campaign event pages and register participants. They want easier ways to promote events, both on and off wiki, and easier ways to communicate with campaign participants. Um, there's also a problem area that we're just calling now participant support tools, but really it's providing more structured help and guidance to participants during the event. Um, then there's what we're calling better tracking tool, so this would be improvements to existing tracking tools like the programs and events dashboard and event metrics and potentially new ways of also thinking of how we can track uh, impact. And finally, there's uh, what we're calling next steps. So this is really how people close out campaigns, how they recognize participants' efforts, and how after the campaign, uh, organizers can take steps to ensure that editors that, whether they're new or experienced, feel excited and want to continue as editors in their journey. Uh, so next slide, please. Um, so there's a lot of different problem areas. I just explained 10 to you. Uh, so rather than just picking one or two and saying, okay, we're going to focus on these, we really want to approach it in a more systematic and integrated way. So one way we're thinking of doing that is by creating what we are calling, you know, an organizer platform. So this is really where we're thinking of how we can, over time, work at a lot of these problem areas. Uh, so we, it will be focused on improving and then simplifying workflows related to the pain points that I just mentioned the previous slide. We want it to be modular. So that means features can be separated and recombined and we want it to be extensible. So that means features can be developed over time and they can be developed by a lot of different groups or people. It can be features our team develops. It can be features that different communities or volunteers develop. But over time, the platform will grow and become bigger and more robust. Um, but of course, we need a first focus area as our first project. Uh, and we've chosen registration. Uh, next slide, please. So in the previous slide, I talked about how we really want to build up a platform over time. So we see that registration is a great first building block to do that. So if you look here, you can see this one potential kind of plan or idea of how this could be possible. Um, so what we see here is take, for example, registration, you see that that can, with list building, lead up to event creation. Um, from there, we can have an action or activation center. So we build up over time more and more support so we can have more robust features. Um, one thing to notice too about this kind of layout that we have here is that some problem areas have more arrows attached to them, like next steps that has more arrows. So in other words, the more arrows there are, the more complexity there is because there's more dependencies and more things we may potentially want to build up first. So next steps, for example, is pretty complex. And again, next steps is how after the event, editors can continue to feel motivated. So they stay on as editors and really grow. Um, and that's because there's a lot of different things that go into next steps uh, with the action or activation activation center, they may want to learn what campaigns they can join next. With list building, they may want to get a list of other articles that are in their interest area for things they could improve 
uh, or create new articles for. For tracking, it's helpful for them to know what they've already done so they can set meaningful goals about what to do next. Um, and then for communication tools, it'd be great if organizers or other people can communicate with them or they can communicate with others about what is good for them to do next and what kind of help they need. So as you can see, there's a lot of different like parts the lead up to next steps, but we're hoping that we can build up the support over time so we can really have this larger vision of a system of empowerment. Okay, so next slide, please. So now let's talk about our first project, which is registration. Next slide. So our objective is to build an on wiki registration configuration and management system. So in other words, that means a way that organizers can create a registration form and manage the registra registration process. Um, our goal is we want to empower organizers by making it easy to see who is coming to campaign events and how to effectively support them. This way, organizers can identify opportunities for growth and re-engagement within their communities and contexts. Next slide. So what are the current registration solutions? Um, there's on wiki and there's off wiki solutions. So um, these top problems you've identified, some apply to on wiki, some apply to off wiki, and some are kind of a problem for both on and off wiki. Um, so just to quickly go through some of these, some problems that apply to a range of solutions, whether on or off, are they can just be time consuming and tedious for organizers to configure and manage. They're really usually not integrated with tracking tools like the dashboard. Um, so a lot of the time organizers need to manually add the usernames of registered participants to the dashboard themselves. Um, now, when we're thinking about on wiki solutions, they can be sort of technically challenging or not very welcoming to newcomers, they can kind of look and feel outdated. It's not very easy to contact participants, especially in a targeted way uh, for off wiki. They're not integrated with wikis. They're not really aligned often with Wikimedia values. Participants can't see who else joined. It's difficult for participants to edit their information. And they tend to not really be very supportive for multilingual, diverse online communities. Next slide, please. Uh, so the way we want to approach building the new registration solution is trying to find what are the best things for on wiki, what are the best things for off wiki, and how can we sort of blend them to get the best of both worlds. So for on wiki, some of the benefits are uh, the registration solutions are integrated with Wikimedia workflows and privacy standards, and you can see everyone who registered. For off wiki, uh, organizers can collect rich participant information and it's very easy for participants to register. It's also easy for organizers to configure the form often. Um, so our vision is really to blend the communalism from on wiki solutions. So in other words, the fact that everyone can see who joined, you're integrated into Wikimedia workflows with the ease of use from off wiki solutions. And on top of that, we have an added bonus, which is integration with tracking tools. So we want usernames that are, uh, we want usernames for registered participants to be automatically pushed to the tracking tool of choice. So in other words, if you're an organizer that's using programs and events dashboard, you can specify that when you're configuring your registration form. And then participants who register for your events can be automatically have their username pushed to the tracking tool instead of you having to add them yourself. Okay, so next slide. I hear a little background noise from someone. Okay, cool. Um, so what are the benefits of this new system? So from the organizer side, organizers can get an easier configuration experience, uh, more information on participants and their needs, better support for languages, integration with wikis, and integration with tracking tools. Uh, participants can get an easier event registration experience, an easier account creation experience. Um, and I mentioned this here because we're hoping to try to find a way in which if users don't have accounts yet, we can have ways potentially that are integrated within the form for them to create an account. We'll have to look into that technically to see what isn't isn't possible. We want to try to simplify that process. Uh, a view of other campaign participants and better onboarding onto wikis. Next slide, please. Um, so 
there's a few last things that I will talk about. Uh, so the first thing I want to address is a question that we received in this on the talk page feedback so far, which is why we aren't looking at existing open source solutions for registration. Um, so first thing I will say is that uh, we haven't hired our engineers yet. We're currently hiring. So certain, uh, I guess, decisions around what backend solutions we will use for creating a registration system will need to be determined by the engineers who aren't on yet. So still may, there may be more that comes about that they can assess. Um, but from the kind of user experience side, we want it to be a platform that's really integrated into the wikis rather than like an external platform off wiki because one of the pain points that we've identified that we really want to address is the fact that now there's this sort of system that isn't really supported on wiki so that's why we're thinking of an odd wiki experience um, so now i'll tell a little bit more about what we imagine for this kind of future of registration and how it can provide a lot more support on wiki so um, overall the way we're building our work is we want it to be agile and iterative that really means that instead of like you know, working on a project for a year and then releasing one version that has all the features at once, we want to release more often so we can collect feedback. Um, and so we can see what's working for people, what's not, and then we can come out with later versions. So we tend, we plan to release earlier and to collect feedback. That also means though, that our earlier release won't have everything at once. We'll have a smaller version that will have the essentials and then over time we'll build it up to have more and more features. Um, but some things that we envision that might not necessarily be in the first release, but are still really important to us. So we imagine on later releases, they'll be available or what I'm gonna share right now. Um, so the ability for organizers to ask for optional information such as the editing level, gender of the participants, why they're joining the campaign. Um, organizers can specify which information in the registration form or information collected about participants is public versus private. Um, organizers can apply search filters in the participant list and send targeted messages based on those filters. Organizers can contact participants based on their method of choice for contacting them. Newcomers can be directed to onboarding tools and resources potentially before the event so they can have some training as newcomers and they'll be a little more prepared and ready when the campaign event starts. Um, the ability to create a sort of standardized, uh, like kind of UX redesigned event pages um, and other expansions of the organizer platform. Uh, so now that is all for me. I'll pass it on to Gregory to give you a bit of a taste of the experience that we're imagining. So thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Gregory. I'm the uh, designer on the campaigns team. Uh, I'm based in Lagos, Nigeria. I recently joined the team about eight weeks ago, and it's been fun learning about Wikimedia and, uh, and, and campaigns. And it's been an interesting um, um, working on solutions to help uh, campaign organizers um, achieve their goals. So um, I'll be sh sharing um, some of the early ideas we have. I'll be sharing um, some of the early designs uh, um, we have for uh, this registration platform. Um, so the this design only shows the flow of um, how company organizers get to add um, registration to their events, and it doesn't show the participant side. So these are just um, these are not the final design. These are just rough early designs, and um, nothing here is fixed and can be changed. And so I would love your feedback on how um, the design or this or the workflow, how well you think um, it um, it helps you. It's going to help you achieve your goals um, regarding organizing campaigns and registration. So I'll be sharing my screen in a moment. Sorry. So can you also my screen? Okay. Um, so um, this is the first page that um, I think organizers see um, when they visit 
come to the um, the registration sites. Um, so that is the the idea I have for the uh, we have for the first page to see. And so it is going to be integrated with Wikipedia. Um, so you can access it on Wikipedia. And um, so if you are signed into Wikipedia, it's you are you are auto automatically signed into this. You don't need to create a separate. There's no separate login for this. So um, if you want to um, the campaign organizer who assuming we're assuming that the campaign organizer has already created an event page. And so if they have done that, they can come to this page, click on create event registration. When they do that, they are, sorry. So when they do that, they are taken to this page. So this is the page where they enter the general info about their events. So the first thing they enter is um, the event page URL. So, um, when they enter, when they enter the event page URL, um, the platform automatically populates the remaining fields via with the information that is on the event page. So if there's info, information in this form that's already been put on the event page by the campaign organizer, this system automatically gets that information. And um, the campaign organizer is also free to edit whatever information was automatically added in case it's, it, wasn't, it may not be correct or any of that. So once you enter the, uh, the URL, you can proceed to enter other fields, name of events, the time and dates of the uh, campaign events. And it also automatically takes the time zone that is set in to your Wikipedia account, but you can, or your campaign organizer is also free to uh, make the necessary changes. So the campaign organizer chooses um, um, what type of events it will be a location where there's going to be an online event. And if it's a physical event, the camp, company organizer um, enter uh, the address of the event. So the company organizer can uh, move on to um, select what um, tracking tool they will be using and enter the URL. Like I was mentioned earlier, um, um, the usernames of the participants is automatically taken from here to from here to the registration uh, platform, um, from the tra to the tracking tool. So campaign organizers do not need to manually enter that information or participants do not need to manually enter that information. So you provide, you select the dashboard you are using, the tracking tool you are using and enter the URL. And below, you can also add um, the usernames of additional organizers for uh, the campaign event. So once the campaign organizer is done with this, click on next and it goes to the next page. So if you can see from at the top, you can see these two steps here. So it's taken to the next stage, which is this page here. So um, for the future versions, this is the page where the campaign organizer um, gets to configure the form, the registration form and um, um, sets the questions that they would like participants to, uh, or the information that they would like to participants to get from participants. But for this MVP, uh, for this version, um, the only information that's being collected from the participants will be their username. So currently for this version, campaign organizers won't be able to modify the form or, I mean, modify it or modify chance or the confirmation message. So um, the campaign organizer can go ahead to preview, click on this button to preview how the event page will look like once the form has been created. Uh, can, and then from there, they, they can move ahead to click on publish form. So when they publish the form, they click on publish form, the form is published and they, they are taken to this page. So um, so when you create the form, immediately you create the form, you wouldn't see this item below because nobody has registered. So you basically see this, so you can copy the link and you can share it um, on whatever platform or to wherever you want to share the URL to. So, but after people have registered, participants have registered for the events, you can see the usernames, the details of the registered participants. And if you want to um, send messages to participants to remind them about the event or to send them um, resources or training uh, materials, you can select all the participants by clicking on at the top here, or you can select individual participants, then click on message. So when you do that, you are... Um, When you do that, this um, sidebar comes up. So you can enter um, the message you want to send and you can select what means 
you would like the message to be sent either via the user talk pages or email or both. You can decide um, to send whatever method you would like um, um, the participant to receive the message. Also, um, you can also edit the form as you can see at the top. You can also, um, this status here shows that the form is online and people can register. So if you click on the drop down, it's not shown in this design, but you can be able to close, you see the option to close the form that is to stop people from um, registering when it is done. So um, let me go to the next. So um, this is the page that um, the first time you visit this page is what the, the user sees. So once you have added your event, or you have created your form and you have multiple forms or events, this is how the page will look like. So you can now see the list of all the um, events you have created. And you can also see the, the um, stats. So you can see the number of people that have registered for your ongoing, for your events. Um, so you can copy, click on this to copy the link to the events and share. And if you click on these three dots here, it will open a menu. So you can click on, you can edit, you can view, you can um, go to the tracking tool of your choice, the dashboard or event metrics or any other tracking tool you might have selected. So you can duplicate the form in case you want to create a new form for a, a, another event and the, the form is similar. So instead of having to recreate everything from scratch, you can just do the data and make necessary edits. So you can also close the form in case you want you do not want people to register continue registering, and you can also delete it. You can also click here to create a new one. You can search for whatever events you have might have created the registration form for, and you can also filter based on the the current the, the current ideas uh, have for the three filter options are uh, um, you can filter for forms that are online. That is, people are, can actively register with and forms are closed. And also uh, forms that drafts that you haven't um, published yet. So um, so once you are done with publishing um, the, the form that was on this page, once you are done clicking on publish, this is how the event page will look like, your event page. So currently, Currently, this is how the normal event page looks like. But um, for this, the, our current idea uh, for the, the only change we, um, we have now is this um, bottom sheet below. So that's the only change that is made to the current design of the event page. So this is added to the bottom of the event page, to the bottom of the screen, not to the bottom of the event page. So you can scroll on that. So the, this bottom sheet is always at, uh, at the over the text. So it's not at the bottom. So um, whoever participants or whoever visits this page can click on this button to, um, to um, join or register for the event. And if the person wants to see more details, can click on the bottom panel or you can click on this more details and it opens up to review a side panel like this. So you can see more information about the events. You can see the date and time. You can see the organizers and you can see the participants who have um, registered. I can also proceed to, um, the person can also proceed to register. So uh, we haven't worked on the flow for how participants will get to register. But the current idea is that um, since current, since we're only collecting the username currently, so the idea is that if the person is already signed into Wikipedia, once the person clicks on this button, the person autom automatically joins the event. If the person is not signed in, the person is asked to sign in. If the person doesn't have an account, the person is, um, asked to um, create a Wikipedia account. So that's all for the flow. Um, just wanted to mention this briefly. So like I mentioned earlier, um, this whole workflow will exist within Wikipedia. So our current idea for how to access this from the Wikipedia, Wikimedia page is the current idea we have. Um, on one of the latest skins, um, the idea we have is that if you click on this button drop down here, a button to access that page will be somewhere on this list or on the um, vector, legacy vector, I think that was called. You can click on contributions and the button to access the um, 
organizer center or campus campaigns event registration will be somewhere on this list. So, so this is the uh, current ideas ideas we have for how the workflow will be. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a rough um, wireframe, and so everything here is liable to change. Nothing is finalized. So a lot of feedback on how if this how the well this workflow um, um, helps you as a company organizer um, achieve your goals regarding um, registration. Um, what do you think works well for you, and what do you think um, could be better improved or added? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Gregory. Um, thank you, Ilana, and thank you, Alex, um, for your presentations. Um, I think at this point, um, we would invite questions from um, participants on the call. Um, I'd just like to say that um, nothing is fixed, like Gregory has mentioned and repeated over again. Um, we will invite your feedback, and, and, and we would be glad to take um, any comments that you have about these. So um, I just wanted to share a few more logistical things with you before we leave. Um, so what's next? We are expecting you to go on our project page, um, read stuff on our project page. We'll be giving up updates very soon on what we're doing on the project. Um, I think it's also very important to rehash that um, engineers are not yet here. So feel free to go on our page and add um, any comments or questions that you may have. Um, I want to also um, re-emphasize that um, we are giving you the opportunity to add um, your comments and feedbacks to the mirror board about the initial designs of the project. And I would invite all of you to um, visit the mirror board to do that. And please feel free to send us messages on our talk page if you have any concerns or comments or suggestions um, to the team. Um, thank you very much once again for joining us today. And I hope um, this was worth your while.